Plugin of the week is the Brainworks Opticom XLA3. The uh, Opticom XLA3 is an emulation of an actual hardware piece. It's an optical uh, leveling amplifier compressor, has uh, three response settings. We'll go over those in a minute. Uh, works with the CDSE photo cells. That's cadmium uh, selenide. I probably pronounced that wrong, but it, uh, you know, um, you're just uh, a type of or form of optical uh, component uh, that's used uh, for the processing. So um, in optical compressors, essentially what you have is a, a, a photo, sensitive, photo sensing or light sensing um, material and one that actually creates the light. And uh, so what happens is the audio signal passes through there and that creates the compression scheme. And uh, so uh, without getting into all of the details of that, which I'm going to butcher, let's get straight into the plugin itself and talk about the hardware unit and how it essentially works. Um, when you set up the plugin, there are three basic modes that you can set it up in. You have an in and an out, that's obvious, uh, to turn it on and off. But you can also uh, put it in circuit, take it out of circuit uh, with the out uh, selection here. And then you could put it in an amplifier circuit, which basically negates the uh, compression processing and uh, gives you just amplification. So you basically can overdrive the unit. That's the, the idea on that end. So we're gonna start with compression here. Uh, you got the meter showing input and output. So this is not putting the signal in and out. You'll see uh, input or output level here, depending upon what you have set. And then you'll see gain reduction on the meter on the right. So even though this is a stereo setup, this is not left right, so don't confuse that. You have an input gain, uh, which feeds into a fixed threshold, and then you have an output gain. Uh, which makes up for or adds to the uh, gain variance right here. Now, um, there are three response settings, fast, normal, and slow, as I said before. Uh, the slow setting, if you start uh, down at the bottom, gives you sort of a moderate attack and a medium uh, release type of uh, setting. So to give you a kind of smoother high end, uh, make the mid-range a little bit uh, juicier. Um, if you work in the normal setting, you get a fast attack and a uh, fast release. Uh, so this will kind of do a little bit more um, uh, toning down of the high frequencies and uh, it will kind of drive the mids a little bit more, or pump the mids a little bit more. Uh, if you go to the fast setting, um, this will give you uh, what they call a slight attack. It actually becomes stronger the more level you push through, uh, which is not uncommon for a lot of limiters, especially vintage limiters and stuff like that. The actual, they don't really often state like a ratio uh, because the ratio is sort of flexible. And um, and so what ends up happening as you sort of drive into it different, it, the aspects of the compressions uh, change because you're running through a physical circuit that will respond differently based on the input signal and how it's driven. Um, but, uh, in, and this will give you uh, a different characteristic sound. So it gives you what they call an instant release. So, uh, so, um, so that uh, slight attenuation at the top end, but a very fast release. And then uh, what that does is it tends to kind of crush the high end a little bit more, uh, drive a little bit more distortion. So um, we can also, uh, let's just set it up and, and run some audio through. That's probably the best way to do it. There's a couple of other things here. One, um, there is a pull for minus 15 dB. And the way that you get to that is by double clicking. So it's not easy to see. So if you look at it, notice the shadow there. So as I double click, you'll see a change in the shading. And what that does is um, if you uh, pull for minus 15 dB, it perhaps works a little bit better if you're looking for light compression settings. If you want to kind of drive the unit more, then pop it in and you kind of you will get that set up and then you can kind of work accordingly. You can bring in as much noise as you want. And then there's a wet dry mix, which is hidden here here on, on the little, um, uh, there's like a little uh, adjustment here. Actually, that would be like a little screw adjustment or what they would call a tweaker adjustment to calibrate the, um, the meter uh, that would be on, on that. So you have an output trim on here as well on the left one. Now, this is different because it's sort of a post-processing output trim. So it's meant to compensate if you really want to drive the signal inside of it pretty hard. So let's put a little audio through it and let's uh, run it through its paces here and see a little bit about what it's uh, what it's doing here. It's pretty cool. Uh, we'll kind of drive in right in. So this is uh, obviously hitting it pretty hard. You see the game reduction right here.
more of the pumping there. Smoother, more LA2 like. And more of a heavy driving thing. You know, in, in LA2A, um, which is the most famous probably of the optical circuits, is uh, uh, optical limiters. Um, has sort of a, a kind of multi-stage release. So it may have an, an initial uh, quick release, but then uh, has a long decay on it. And that's obviously for broadcast uh, purposes where there is a sort of gap. You don't want the gain to just make up too quickly. Uh, this way, if it's like an announcer at a baseball game or something like that, and they don't comment you know, too quickly between pitches or something like that, the gain doesn't make up all the way. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, like you hear all kinds of noise in the background. Um, here, this is uh, not really the use for that, but you could hear like the edgy character that immediately comes in. So let's go to a softer setting. I'm going to pull the minus 15 here and, uh, and then I'll, so I'm going to go to a lighter. So even with a light compression, it's got a nice depth characteristic that's added. Go to the fast setting. Go to a slow, more traditional setting. So it's more of a smoothing or driving. This is one where it sounds like if we go back here, I'm gonna bring my gain back here where where you would wanna, you know, really kind of drive it pretty hard. And then uh, use the wet dry control to kind of mix it in. just to give it a little edge or character. And you could hear how that like you know gives you like a real edginess and and it's also well, actually I want to set that to 100% wet here um you could see how that that really changes up the characteristic gets into you know a real distortion type of thing and we could bypass this just let's check out this quickly so if i drag this over to the amp setting we'll have no gain reduction because there'll actually be no amplification here we're just going to get into uh driving the sound here Sometimes here we can, uh, this is a good place to pull down our output tram. And obviously this response, I'm going to it by default because I'm used to working with a compressor, but obviously not doing anything. So what's really cool about this is that you can use this just even on individual tracks. Just take a bass sound and uh, and saturate it on that level. Let's just let's kind of uh, do that. Let me just bypass it here and let's just take a bass and uh, just do uh, do that really quick so we'll go to 
the uh, plugin alliance and let's just set this to amp here for a second and and let's uh, see what we can make happen here with the bass part Maybe I'll do what I was uh, talking about here, bring this down by 10 dB or so. And then kind of mix that back a little bit. If we took what we were just doing here and put this on uh, on the drums, I just put this on the drum stem to take it off, and uh, went back and maybe did a little uh, heavy, uh, fast compression here. Let's just kind of check our output level. Maybe a little excessive. more lively. And you can really hear the depth it brings into the drums with that pumping movement. Really bringing in now that, that reverb. It obviously needs to be tweaked in, but you get the idea. It's a real tone generating machine. You can really you go in, work with the different uh, characteristics. Uh, the wet dry mix is really amazing. Um, the real key to, to learning how to use this is the way that you control the input and output gain structure. Uh, and that includes not only the output gain here, but the output trim, because uh, they're two separate things. And whether you're using compression or just amplification, um, you hear it has a, a lot of character. Um, and uh, you can see how it would be, you know, a, a very popular analog piece of, of gear. I've never used this in, in its hardware form, uh, but if I see it, I definitely check it out. It's uh, very cool. That is uh, the plugin of the week, which is the uh, uh, Brainworks Opticom uh, Model XLA-3. Uh, That's uh, by Acme Audio Engineering Company. <laughs>